royal marriages are very different from the ones portrayed in modern media. In those examples, the prince and princess fall in love and live happily ever after, but the reality is that many royal brides and grooms did not meet each other until their wedding days. Marriages were not about love, they were about political and economic stability. As a result of being forced into marriages, many monarchs took lovers. One monarch who is famous for his lovers is King Louis XIV of France, the longest reigning monarch in European history with a record 72 years on the throne. His wife that he married in 1660 is often overshadowed by the other women who shared the bed of the 17th century French king. This is the story of Queen Marie Therese of Spain. Marie Therese was born as Maria Theresa on September 10, 1638 in Spain. Her parents, King Philip IV and Queen Elizabeth of France, would have 11 children in total but only two would survive past early childhood. Maria's brother, Balthasar Charles, would however die aged 16 in 1646. When Maria was six, her mother died at the age of 41 on October 6, 1644. King Philip remarried his niece, Mariana of Austria, and she gave birth to a son in 1657. The boy died at the age of four, but another son, the infamous King Carlos II, was born in November 1661. Before the births of her brothers, Marie Theresa was the heir apparent of Spain since the country did not follow Salic law like France did. During her childhood, Maria Theresa had a governess, Luisa Magdalena de Jesus, who would leave court in 1648 to become a nun. Maria was given a religious education by Juan de Palma, commissioner of the Indies. Later on, he was replaced with Father Vazquez who was a man known for his virtues and devotion. In 1658, as war between France and Spain began to cool down, a marriage was proposed between the royal houses of the respective countries. Cardinal Mazarin and his diplomats put hard negotiations on Spain and a large dowry was eventually agreed upon. However, Spain was never able to pay the sum to France due to the immense losses the country suffered during wartime. A proxy wedding was held in Spain, and Maria was then sent away to France. On June 7, 1660, Maria, her father King Philip, and the Spanish court met with the French court during the meeting on the Isle of Pheasants. Louis and Maria were born only five days apart from each other, and his mother was Maria's aunt. Maria's mother was also the sister of Louis's father, so Louis and Maria were double first cousins. The official wedding took place two days later on June 9, 1660 when both bride and groom were nearly 22 years of age. Louis was faithful to his wife during their first year of marriage, but this would not last. He would start an affair with Louise de la Valliere, who bore him five children. In the book, Kings and Queens, a Chronicle of History's Most Interesting Monarchies by Brenda Ralph Lewis, the author describes Maria Theresa's, now known by the French version of her name as Marie Theresa's, personality. She is described as being simple-minded. Her interests were limited to sweets, her animals, praying, and watching the dwarf entertainers at court. She had no interest in politics or literature and spent her time playing cards and gambling. She was never able to completely master the French language and surrounded herself with Spanish ladies at court. Marie and Louis quickly fulfilled their marriage duty and Marie gave birth to a son, also named Louis, on November 1, 1661. Five more children would follow between 1662 and 1672, but all of the children would die in childhood. Marie took great interest in her role as a mother and helped oversee her son's education. Marie also developed a close relationship with her aunt-slash-mother-in-law, and of Austria, which was not a very common occurrence between royal spouses and their in-laws. And of Austria would die on January 20, 1666 at the age of 64. On that day, Louis lost his mother and Marie lost a close friend. After the death of her mother-in-law, Louis continued to be unfaithful to his wife. After his relationship with Louise ended, the next official mistress of the king was Madame de Montespan. She would bear the king six children and their relationship would last for years before the affairs of the poisons. 
These affairs broke Marie's heart as she idolized her husband. Another notable lover of the king was a young noblewoman named Marie Angelique, who died in 1681 at the age of 19, most likely from childbirth complications. In 1667, Marie Therese traveled to the Spanish Netherlands during the War of Dissolution. A few years later in 1672, Louis appointed Marie Therese as regent during the Franco-Dutch War. In May 1682, the Palace of Versailles officially became the residence of the French king, but Marie Therese's story at Versailles was already coming to a close. In the summer of 1683, Marie Therese's health took a turn for the sour after she returned from a tour of Burgundy and Elsass. She became ill and died on July 30, 1683 at the age of just 44 due to complications from an abscess on her arm. When Louis XIV learned of the death of his wife of over 20 years, he said, this is the first time she's caused me any bother. Louis would marry his second wife, Madame de Matignon in either 1683 or 1684. The marriage was morganatic and Louis's second wife never became Queen of France. Unlike his first wife, he would stay faithful to his second until his death in 1715 at the age of 76. Overshadowed by the mistresses of her husband, Marie Therese never seems to have her time in the spotlight. Now, over three centuries since she took her last breath, to speak her name is to make her live again. Thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and comment. If you enjoy historical and the occasional gaming content, please subscribe to Sweet History Tea, a channel full of random facts and lots of sparkles. If you want to submit an idea for a history video, click on the link in the description. Until next time.